Hello, everyone. My name is Haley Cassidy, AmeriChem's Global Digital Marketing Manager. I'd like to thank you all for joining today's webinar, Kokona Labs and AmeriChem Joint Webinar on Smart Textiles, which is where we will explain the different types of additives available for property modifications and the key parameters and considerations to focus on when designing for this challenging application space. All attendees are muted, so please send in your questions through the questions tab and we will address them at the end of the presentation. Today, we'll start with a brief introduction of our panelists and who AmeriChem and Kokona Labs are, followed by what Kokona Labs 37.5 technology is and how it can bring value to your textile products. Then we'll explore modifications that are possible with in-melt additive solutions and what the key considerations are when designing fibers for use in textiles. Lastly, we'll be taking your questions during our Q&A segment. Today, I am joined by Wes Burgess, Chief Product Officer for Kokona Labs, and Tom Disler, National Account Manager for AmeriChem. I'll now turn it over to our panelists for them to give brief bios of themselves followed by the rest of the presentation. Thanks, Haley. Thanks, Tom. Um, thank you very much for the invitation. It's really nice to be here. It's uh, my pleasure. Um, I've spent my career in new product development uh, from you know, specialty fibers, uh, flame retardant gear for the US military, electro-optical mechanical cables for the oil and gas and defense sectors, amongst others. And today, we're going to be talking about my role as uh, what I do and our product as Chief Product Officer for Kokona Labs. Um, I've spent a lot of my time today um, developing manufacturing supply chains, quality systems, being aware of competing technologies and trends in the market, uh, of course doing new product development and commercialization uh, with our cross-functional teams, and uh, I also do sales in Southeast Asia and in India, China, and Indonesia. So thank you very much, and uh, looking forward to the presentation today. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Wes. As Haley has mentioned, I'm Tom Disler, and I've been with AmeriCamp about 32 years now, all involving the synthetic fibers business out of the Concord, North Carolina site. I've spent some time in technical leadership early on in my career on the quality side, but most of my experience has been on the commercial front. Currently, I'm involved with both our Texo and apparel as well as our BCF carpet businesses, leading several of our teams in developing solutions for our customers in the always evolving solution dye market. Uh, it is my pleasure in doing this webinar with Wes. He and I have been involved, it seems like, in one project or another for about 20 years now. It's great to be doing this with you, Wes. Me too, thanks. Now, AmeriCam has been doing business as a privately held company for over 80 years now. We are based in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio, with over 1,200 employees worldwide. AmeriChem's global footprint allows it to serve many different markets using both master batch and compound solutions with our diverse teams around the world. Uh, we also continue to be recognized as a global technology leader in the plastics industry. This map here shows AmeriCom's facilities worldwide, including manufacturing sites, sales, and R&D centers. Our many certifications are listed here, and this information can also be found on our website. Wes, why don't you introduce us to 37.5 and Kokona Labs now? Thanks, Tom. So Kokona Labs is a technology company based in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, we have a suite of intellectual property from trade secrets, um, company confidential information, pending patents, uh, granted, you know, patents, uh, as well as trademarks around the world. We do operate on a licensing business model um, with uh, licensed manufacturing partners, as well as licensed consumer brand partners. And so... 37.5 is actually our consumer facing ingredient brand uh, with a brand promise of sustainable thermoregulation. And so 37.5 is a patented dynamic thermoregulation technology that works by managing humidity within the microclimate through evaporation. 
and the microclimate that we're talking about in, in this case is um, apparel or home textiles like sheets and bedding. And uh, we are introducing a, a functional particle that loves water uh, as well as the infrared energy that your body naturally and continually gives off. And when I, when I say water, I also mean vapor, not just liquid form. So before liquid forms, we're, we're also working in the vapor stage. So we are not a wicking technology. Those work by um, you know, moving liquid. We remove vapor and humidity before that liquid forms. The result of that is a lower humidity or lower apparent temperature, also known as the heat index within a microclimate clothing system, for example. So why the number 37.5? It represents two things for us. It's, it's the optimal relative humidity within the microclimate um, defined by the Hohenstein Institute. You know, they give a range, 37.5 is right in the middle of that range, and we chose that number uh, because it also is the optimal core body temperature at peak performance in degrees Celsius. This is a great uh, slide because it actually shows the pictures and the stages that we go through. We deliver this surface functional, very high surface area additive that's got some really unique you know, material and physical properties. And Americam disperses it in the polymer, and this is the middle picture, uh, and it's formulated for multiple polymer types. And then is permanently embedded through the extrusion process uh, in staple fiber and filament and then goes into a lot of different applications in microdenure fibers for apparel, home, textiles, footwear, insulation, waterproof breathable laminates, and the, the list goes on. And so this, this additive that has these unique physical and material properties is like a sensor uh, that, is, that we're embedding in a patented way to expose them to the surface of these fibers. And this sensor is dynamically reacting to the microclimate. You know, this goes, this works across garment types, fabric weights, constructions. And so the sensor is sensing is water present or not in, in the form of vapor again. If, if water vapor is present, our additive reacts to that and helps to speed and diffuse, you know, that water vapor through evaporation through the microclimate system. So you don't trap that heat and humidity within the clothing system. If water is not present, that means your body is trying to actually generate heat and maybe even shiver to, to generate heat and warm up. Our technology also sees then the infrared energy uh, that your body gives off and returns that to the system for warming. And so as our business has grown around the world um, in polymer types and different consumer brands, uh, we're now also combining this additive, this technology, with multiple other additives in the same fiber for different applications and consumer needs. Okay. Tom? Well, uh, yep, thank you. I just switch over to my, uh, my slides here. Americam's offerings in synthetic fibers encompass several branded product families that span many industries and i'm showing them here on this slide and while diversity is is evident here the wide array of end uses it um, it's evident in that a wider array of end uses a unifying need in this space is to deliver affordable innovation that drives consumer preference whether you operate in a market demanding a durable long-term product such as a as carpet or a single use disposable one, such as a face mask. Meeting or exceeding consumer expectations requires a manufacturer such as yourselves to unify a complex set of variables, tracing all the way back to the incoming raw materials. For today's discussion, we are focusing on how Americom is involved with a unique additive from Kona Labs that is involved in thermoregulation and many different polymers and applications. Now, depending on the particular type of project, Americam has a pretty good spectrum of materials from which to select to achieve the success our customers are needing 
and a smart textile. We look at what kind of parameters should guide our choice as we design the appropriate solution. There are four basic questions that we need to consider here. The first is, what is the function of the textile being made? And we then look at what is the article's environment or lifestyle? What polymer is the textile made from? And finally, what level of performance is expected? Simple, right? Well, not exactly. Each question illuminates a series of factors that need to be taken into consideration. But let's take the third question, for example. What polymer are we working with? In that facet of the design problem, we need to consider things like thermal stability requirements, particle size, filament size, and optical qualities like transparency or haze. Additional considerations include yellowing or discoloration concerns, any UV requirement impact, dispersibility, and other efficacy performances in that particular polymer. And this is not even a complete list. Each of the other questions unfolds before it's just like that. So when we ask the design experts, for example, what, what kind of flame retardant product should I use in my apparel fabric? The best answer really is, well, it depends. Now, as I stated previously, all of the different fiber forming polymers have different properties that are intrinsic to its chemical structure and composition. It, it, it is what it is, so to speak. But is this a static situation with no possibility of change? Not in the least. But perhaps Wes can add some input from a Kukona lab side into this now. Wes? Yeah, thanks, Tom. Yeah, thanks, Tom. You know, when we first started, we were in, you know, mainly polyester, you know, virgin polyester. Today, we're in recycled variants of that, uh, nylon 6.6, nylon 6, developing polypropylene, et cetera. And so, uh, one of the things I'd like to just touch on is how important the uh, master batch is to the success of that, you know, in order to deliver our brand promise to our consumer brands. You know, when we get that master batch COA with the, the loading, the dispersion, the, the, the indications around melt index and viscosity, all of those are incredibly important to us so that we can achieve, you know, high yields uh, at different manufacturers ar around the world. So I just want to make sure I mention that. And today, you know, we're not just in 100% polyester or, you know, synthetic garments. Um, we're, for example, in home textiles, uh, cotton heavy blends, 70-30, for example, uh, in sheeting. Uh, we also blend our technology with wool. For example, this Kenneth Cole jacket is a wool 37.5 blend. Um, in India, we're blending with silks, with nylons. Uh, we also have hemp 37.5. Uh, fabrics. In fact, in our library, there's uh, there's about 9,000 different certified uh, fabrics from our licensed manufacturing partners in various blends, counts, constructions, and weights uh, around the world. Um, this quick video I want to show you, I'm going to talk you through this. Uh, what you're going to see, you know, is 37.5 surface functional particles embedded permanently on the surface of the fiber. Uh, these particles do two things. They are electrostatically attracted to the polarity of water, um, and they also, these particles absorb the infrared energy, like I said, that your body gives off. That energy is transferred to the water vapor, exciting them, and then speeding diffusion through the microclimate. And so that's literally what we're doing is managing humidity through thermoregulation uh, within the microclimate. And everyone knows this kind of intrinsically that you know humidity is a amplifier you know hot is hotter when it's humid and cold is colder when there's water present and everyone sitting in your office or at your desk today is thermoregulating through evaporation your body is giving off heat in the form of humidity right now and if we all put on a plastic garbage bag we haven't changed our activity level or the, the temperature in the room or, or anything we, we've just trapped the heat and we would all be uncomfortable in about 20 or 30 seconds. And so this is just illustrating what our brand promise is uh, to the consumers is our ability to 
remove that from the system and it results in a more comfortable um, clothing system across activity levels. The second video is also going to illustrate this, this effect. You've got two chambers. Uh, the one on the left is going to obviously be the 37.5 chamber and we're going to pump these chambers full of humidity and there's humidity sensors as you can see and uh, eventually the chamber they're both going to be open to the same volume of space but the chamber on the left is exposed to our surface functional particles and the result is a reduction in the humidity within that that area um, and you can see the elapsed time in the top left so uh, just just illustrates we're using these active particles to attract and remove humidity from that microclimate and so as you go about your day in different activities uh, different activity levels uh, from an office to a bike ride at lunch. 37.5 is offering dynamic thermal regulation 24 hours a day. Our brand partners, our consumer brand partners, are able to differentiate themselves with this brand and this technology. Um, you know, with a patented and validated technology with a number of different um, brand attributes. And so we're not just uh, thermoregulating through humidity management, but we also have an odor control component. The, the additive that's natural, never washes out, it's permanent and, you know, for the life of the garment. It's, of course, it's Ecotech certified and safe, consumer, you know, skin safe and hypoallergenic, those types of things. So. Um, and on this slide, I think Tom and I are going to really talk about how um, these two companies have come together. Tom mentioned we've worked together for over 20 years, and it's not really an exaggeration to say that, you know, every challenge that we've worked together on, Americam has come through for us in no small part, you know, Tom, due to you and management of that. But um, I, I really appreciate the, the partnership there, and it speaks to the cultures, the similarity in the cultures. Uh, the long looking for long-term partnerships and relationships. So I, I think we're a, a great fit together. And through that relationship, we've developed both of us uh, proprietary technologies that have led to process engineering and uh, increasing manufacturing yields, delivering on this brand promise to consumer brands uh, that you all would know uh, today. And of course, we've touched on a few of the important parameters about the master batch, including the dispersion quality, the viscosity, and those types of things. Tom, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely, Wes. Couldn't agree with you more. Uh, a couple of points I want to uh, hit on here on this slide, or the, the, the last two that we have here, the bottom two. Uh, first one being, being dispersion. This is considered, <clears throat> excuse me, one of Americam's core technologies, of course. Americam focuses its efforts here on determining the right dispersion process for the best overall success of the project. Particle size distribution is so important here in getting a mined material into such a fine fiber in this case. Because of this, our two companies spent a good amount of time on the front end to determine that our dispersion work that we chose produce the most optimized product for the end uses that it was going to see. The other point I want to bring up and talk about for just a moment is what we call the international footprint. I mentioned American's global footprint earlier on in this presentation. And since Kokona Labs and American both have abilities to serve the global marketplace with our plants, labs, sales and service centers these capabilities have helped in our efforts to aid in addressing technical service opportunities and also master batch delivery to kokona labs international extrusion partners a good example here is americam's pune india plant already stores and helps distribute the, the master batch in that region for kokona labs wes yeah, that was uh, extremely important for us at the beginning of the pandemic with so much supply chain uncertainty. The ability to manufacture within India was very important to us and our consumer brand partners. And of course, 
that was a perfect match. And uh, that team in India is uh, top notch. I really love those that team. So they've been super helpful and supportive. Um, the other thing on the dispersion quality that you mentioned um, with the COA, and you mentioned all of the upfront work that we've done, uh, we're able to actually predict extrusion success based on the parameters that are recorded and that we've developed together on the um, the master batch COA. So uh, incredibly important to us. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, just a, a map here. We're headquartered in Boulder, Colorado, but we do have uh, sales, tech service, fabric innovation, um, you know, those types of things around the world um, in support of our consumer brand partners and licensed manufacturing partners. You know, there's over 200 different licensed manufacturing partners around the world, and uh, those are, you know, chosen and developed in support of our consumer brand partners sourcing strategies, and so we're very flexible in that regard. And of course, we're proud of all of our consumer brand partners. And I've mentioned maybe one or two so far, but some others you may know of are like Burberry, Calvin Klein, uh, Costco, Point Six, uh, Target, Pottery Barn, Banana Republic. Uh, this is a Kenneth Cole, um, you know, fat men's suit jacket. Uh, of course, we also work with Lacoste, Rossignol, uh, Kiko car seats, and so the list just goes on and on. Um, and you can find more information about our brand partners uh, on our website. I'd invite you to visit there. Um, and of course, we've got all the teams that I mentioned. And so we are a technology company uh, who licenses out our patented technology and trademark portfolio, but we do engage on all of these different levels with our manufacturing and consumer brand partners, depending on their need and desire to do so. And so that's, you know, we, we've acquired this capability through a really dynamic and professional team. So, so thanks, Tom. Uh, that's, that's what I wanted to briefly mention about today. Um, if you had any additional, you know, information or later want to reach us, you know, here's our website and our email address. You can find me on LinkedIn and other places as well. I invite you to do that. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Yep, sure enough. And adding to that, Wes and I would like to thank you all very much for attending our webinar today. It has been our pleasure to put this presentation together. And as, like, as Wes just mentioned, please see our general contact information listed here. And please reach out to us afterwards if you like. Wes, again, Great doing this with you and Haley. We're going to turn it over to you. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Wes and Tom. That was a great presentation. We'll now move on to the Q&A portion of our webinar. I'll be reading off the questions that have been submitted and pass them on to our panelists for answering. So our first question here, um, does this additive offer any antimicrobial or antiviral properties? Um, I'll take that one, Tom. Um, okay. So it's a great question. We do not offer uh, antiviral in the way of killing uh, viruses. On the antimicrobial, we do have an odor control component because we we are managing the microclimate, and bacteria need a warm, you know, wet type of climate to be able to grow and and thrive. And uh, there's a parameter of water activity level and we are reducing the humidity within that microclimate and so uh, it's you know we pass certain odor reduction tests and so although we are not killing bacteria or preventing growth we do manage the microclimate that makes it a harsher environment for those bacteria to grow and then produce the odor causing you know uh, chemicals, but when those chemicals are present, isovaleric acid, butyric acid, those types of things, our our technology is able to trap and then release those uh, chemistries in the uh, launder cycle. So we, we do have a, a strong odor reduction um, component. Okay, our next question is, um, does it spin well in nylon 6 or nylon 6-6? Six six? Yes. You, you can talk to no. that once. <laughs> it does. Um, and it um, is not something that 
we've taken lightly. I mean, obviously there's a lot of work that goes into that and we produce uh, nylon 6-6 staple fiber and uh, nylon 6 filament yarn, both in the U.S. today, as well as in Asia uh, for our partners. Uh, we also do solution dye 37.5 variants of those as well for both uh, wool 37.5 nylon socks, uh, cotton 37.5 uh, you know nylon dress shirts um, so yes it, it does spin well and uh, we produce those today okay our next question is is this a concentrated master batch product or compound yep i'll just take that one on it is a master batch a certain le uh, level and it's a consistent level you know pound after pound so as West can allude to it, that helps their extrusion uh, folks down downstream to know just what use rate to use every each and every time, right, Wes? Yeah, that's right. That's important to us because we need a in order to deliver that brand promise, a certain parts per million or loading of the functional additive in the fibers and yarns, and then. Uh, certain amount of that fiber and yarn in fabric uh, in order to achieve the the brand promise. Sorry, I just had a little bit of feedback, which was for the pause there. But uh, so yes, that's uh, important for us as well. Okay. Um, our next question here is: What are the different ways people thermoregulate, and how does thirty-seven point five technology compare? That's a great question. Why don't you take so, that, you take that yeah, one out? I'll do that one. Um, so 37.5 um, uses the only thermoregulating mechanism the body has that's not temperature dependent, and that's evaporation. So evaporation uh, works if it's cold outside or if it's hot outside. And the fact that we see that humidity and do something with it then responds to that environment. The other thermoregulating mechanisms like conduction, convection, and radiation are temperature dependent. And so if it's hot outside or if you blow hot air over your skin or touch something hot, you, you don't cool down. You actually heat up or burn yourself. And so that results in a much lower capacity and capability to thermoregulate the body. And so everyone sitting in their office right now is keeping a constant core body temperature through evaporation and it's a much more powerful mechanism so that's how um, it compares is it uses the only mechanism not temperature dependent and it works in evaporation and managing humidity okay our next question is i have some interest in getting more product information on the other additives list from the brand slide shown what's the best way to get started here I'll, I'll take that one. Uh, we have a, a website I alluded to. It's called uh, americam.com, www.americam.com. That's your best bet to, to go in and look and just see what those offerings are. And then also, as a follow-up, please reach out to me with any comments or questions after that. I'll be happy to guide you through, through that process. A good question. Thanks. Our next question is, does adding more of your technology have a larger effect on the microclimate? Yes, that's a great question. Um, we do have certain minimum requirements to achieve our brand promise, but we've also correlated the uh, the amount of this additive that's present in a uh, in a measurement called the active particle index. And there's a very strong correlation between the active particle index and the corresponding apparent temperature reduction within a microclimate. So given a fabric, a weight, a content, you know, I could predict then based on the active particle index, what the corresponding, you know, apparent temperature reduction would be based on, you know, the enormous amount of testing and studying that we've done. So yes, there's a direct correlation to fabrics and garments with 37.5 technology having various active particle indices and other fabrics with an active particle index of zero. Thanks for the question. Next question is, are you able to share what the percentage loading is in fibers? 
Uh, that is a company, you know, confidential type of information. We've spent an enormous amount of time and uh, obviously money and energy to develop what are the capabilities and spinning and manufacturing high yields and then how, how much of that needs to be in fabric and then how much of the fabric needs to be in a garment to achieve a certain brand promise, et cetera. So we, we've taken all of that complex information and research and boiled it down to the active particle index. And so that's really the, the number that we talk to any master batch concentrations, dosing levels and fibers and parts per million in, in uh, fiber and, and yarns. That's going to be confidential information. Yep, a lot of hard work and effort went into getting it to this level. That's for sure. But but it is important to note that we do test obviously every lot of master batch, every lot of staple fiber and filament yarn is tested in our lab in Boulder. Every single fabric that's developed needs to be verified and certified in our lab in Boulder. Um, and so we're, we're, we have a quality regime that's um, built on delivering the brand promise, and that is tied to the active particle index or how much of our technology is present in staple fibers and filament yarns and in fabrics. Great question. Okay, so that wraps up the Q&A portion of our webinar. I'd also like to mention briefly here how you can ask us further questions after the webinar is over. Um, if you have any other questions, you can certainly connect with our panelists on LinkedIn, but you can also go to the AmeriChem website and ask questions to the instructions on this slide. If you go to americam.com and click contact us, then choose the contact form that states I have a general corporate inquiry and choose the option to send the form to marketing. I'll be receiving all of those questions directly and following up as soon as possible with our panelists to answer those additional questions. You can take a screenshot of these directions, but we'll also be sending out a follow-up email with the directions in the email and a link to the contact page. We'll also be posting this recorded webinar on our website uh, tomorrow morning. Um, so I'd like to thank our panelists for their time today, and I'd also like to thank our attendees for joining AmeriChem and Kakona Labs in this important discussion about smart textiles. Thank you again for attending, and that concludes our presentation. Thanks, thank Tom. You. Thanks, Taylor. Thank you, Thanks, Wes. Guys. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. You too.